Hi, this is Mass Rundown. If you enjoy movie reviews and trailer reactions, you're at the right place, so why not subscribe and hit the like button down below. Today we're going to be reviewing Nobody. Nobody is directed by Ilya Naishula and stars Bob Odenkirk as Hutch Mansell, Aleski Serebryakov as Julian Kuznetsov, and Christopher Lloyd as David Mansell. Nobody is a surprisingly enjoyable film. While you can make many comparisons to films like John Wick, it really is a lot more than just that. Hutch is a seemingly average Joe, struggling with the monotony of everyday life, who is wronged and goes on a rampage using his skills learned from a checkered past. So looking at the good, the movie is very simple, but it is very good. And it is surprisingly thoughtful. Yeah. A couple of scenes, Hutch sits with dying people and people, of course, he's caused them to die. I mean, they attacked him in self-defense, in his rampage, he's killed them. But while they're dying, he sits with them, he talks with them, he calms them down. It's not this condescending gloating. It's very... Surprisingly humane. Yes. Yeah. Also like... The fact that he crushes one character's throat at one stage, and I'm like, that guy's throat is crushed. He's not going to be able to breathe. And then Hutch looks at him and is like, oh, shh, and grabs a pen and does a tracheotomy. Yeah. I think it also talks to the fight scenes that, that everything was very, almost realistic. Like, like if somebody got their face bashed onto a table or something, their teeth would fly out, and pieces of their teeth would be falling out. I know in one of the interviews or something that he did, he said that his head actually did hit the pole for real in one scene, but he just told everyone to continue because, you know, he wanted it to be real. Yeah. And what's nice also about the fight scenes is he wasn't straight away good. You could see he had time off. He was rusty. It took him a while to get going. And he was getting pretty beat up all over the place. I like the end because they did a lot of tunneling so that it was one versus one instead of a whole group. Yeah. Because, I mean, he would never be able to take on a whole group. No. What I really liked is the view of secondary victimization. Because after the event that triggers him happens, a lot of people are like, I would have done this, or you should have done this, or a real man would have done this. And that secondary victimization, everyone else saying, no, you should have, you would have. But at the end of the day, he made decisions that kept his family alive. Yeah. And in those situations, that's all you can hope for. And I like the fact that they actually hit home with that. And again, another thoughtful scene, and it's weird constantly referring to nobody as a thoughtful movie, is after the event that triggers him, he sits down and he talks to somebody on the other side of a radio, and they're more like, tell me about it, talk me through it, how are you feeling? Like, actually caring and talking to him as opposed to saying, no, you should have done this and you should have done this. So it was very nice to see somebody... Do it right. Helping him through it. Yes. Yeah. That's the way it should be handled. Check in with the person. How are you doing? Not you should have. So as you would expect with this type of movie, the plot line is actually really thin if you take a step back from it. Mm. It's more of an exploration into the main character. And I think saying that, if anybody other than Bob Odenkirk had tried to do this with this script, it probably wouldn't have worked. He brought a lot to this character. You could see him overcompensating from his past life to him getting a bit into it and trying to find common footing with his family at times because he's a bit estranged. You can see the interactions he has with his daughter, which is so well done. Then even the interactions he has with the bad guys, it's you know, a complete character exploration. Like you said, I definitely don't think it would have worked without him because he has a certain look and he has this presence that really matches the character. Yes. I think he did an excellent job. Christopher Lloyd really looked like he was having a good time doing this movie, which was fun to see. Yes. Because he's such a good actor. And I also think that the bad guy, Ileski, had fun. And I liked what he brought to the movie. It was different. In general, the movie was a lot of fun. It was surprisingly funny as well. Like I was laughing, not constantly, but a lot throughout this movie. <laughs> More than what I expected. Totally more than I expected. And it's got the weirdest soundtrack as well. Because it doesn't feel like it should fit. If you looked at the movie and the soundtrack separately, they don't mix. But once you put it over each scene, it's like, yeah, okay, that actually works quite well for some reason. They were very attuned to the tone of the movie. Yes. Then looking at the bad, 
everybody other than Bob Odenkirk felt like very secondary characters. Like they were there just to support the story a little bit, but let's focus just on Bob Odenkirk. And it's not a bad thing because of the presence and the performance he brought, but I can't say anybody else was really notable. They were having fun and you could see they were decent in the roles, but you could take them out and replace them with anybody and it wouldn't make a difference. It wouldn't matter all too much. I liked the bad guy. I thought he, he was different enough and brought enough to make him interesting. Overall, I was really hesitant to watch this movie because I thought it was going to be another John Wick. And they're not my favorite movies. They're not bad. They're just not great. This one was actually fun enough and there's all these little interesting things that happens during the movie that I could actually watch it again and probably pick up more things that I missed. That takes us to the ratings. I gave it an 8. And I gave it a 7. That leaves it with a respectable 7.5, which is pretty good for this movie. Definitely. Because it was definitely a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. So let us know in the comments down below. Out of John Wick, The Equalizer, all of these retired hitman type of stories, which one's your favourite? Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're on our way to 100 subscribers, so please help us get there. Bye. Later. Later.